my name is Dominic Moss and I am the Life Science Manager of Savannah at Werribee Open Range Zoo. We have a number of different areas on Savannah at Werribee that house what we call mixed species exhibits and those are really awesome because it means that we've got a whole bunch of different animals that actually live together in one area. The first one you'll drive in when you do the safari is called Arid and that has got two species in it, scimitar horned oryx and then we also have camels in that one. And then you move through to the woodlands, which has also got a number of different species in it, like the nyala and the blackbuck and some female ostriches. And then probably our biggest sort of flagship area is what we call the lower savannah. And that's really awesome because we've got seven different species that actually live on that area. And it's, it's giraffe and we've got rhino and zebra and scimitar horned oryx and ostriches, we got to think really carefully about what animals are compatible with what animals, what we can put together, who can go with other animals and who's going to get on with who. What we try and do there is, is what we call like analoguing, which is where we try to mimic what naturally happens in the wild. So what, what animals occur together in the wild and what do we know gets on? For example, down on Lower Savannah, we've got a bunch of species that normally would occur together and they would be happily on the savannah ranges together and enjoying each other's companies. When animals are together like that, they'll often form relationships with one another, what's, what's called things like mutualistic relationships. You know, often for the most part, they, they wouldn't actually be of particular benefit, but they certainly do look out for each other when they are together like that. For the most part, the animals just get on with one another. There's not a lot of them helping one another out. Um, although there definitely are some instances of that. The scimitar horned oryx and, and the camels, they really enjoy each other's company. And you'll often actually see them huddled up together, sitting there together. And, you know, the, the oryx will actually groom the camels sometime and it's really amazing you walk out there and the oryx are actually grooming the camels and the camels will enjoy that because when it uh, is summertime and they're actually molting they'll get a little bit of help from the oryx to get some grooming done so they're not so warm looking after a whole bunch of different species in one area does take a bit of careful thought and we've got to do that really really well um, so that you know you make sure everybody's getting enough of the right kind of food and that can range from anything like the height at which we're feeding, the spacing, the timing, the, we, we actually do recall. So, you know, we might feed a giraffe at a certain height where a scimitar horned oryx can't get to their food. So we know that they're getting the right amount of food for them. And then we'd also do spacing. So we might feed in different areas. So, you know, come dinner time, you guys get your food there, you get your food there, and you guys at the kiddies table down at the bottom and get your food over there. So next time you're down on, on Savannah or in any of our areas, please check them out. Please check out the different animals and the different relationships. And if you see a keeper around, get the guide to say to the keepers, hey, what are you guys up to? What's going on there? And you, quite often you'll find they'll say, hey, yo, we're feeding the rhino now and we're going to go over there to feed the eland so we don't get any competition and things. So get the keepers to have a chat to you guys and, and show you how everybody gets on really well on, on Savannah. <laughs>